Uh, we, we one day decided we were going to create an academy, and it was named the Panoply Academy. <laughs> it's sort of, I guess it's sort of just like a, it's this entity that sort of um, exists, like all the things that people believe in or put faith in, like church or government, and rather than, I think the idea was sort of that we created our own institution to believe in, and that's, I think that's, that's how I always thought of it. Kids said that we uh, sounded like uh, alternative ska because we had trombone, I think, in the band. I guess we are an alternative to ska. He asked us if we sounded like Tool or if we sounded more like Helmet. <laughs> he gave us two play. choices. <laughs> two choices, like he two, was the bouncer. Two heads on a double-sided coin. <laughs> We're the Panoply Academy Legionnaires from the Tri-State area. <laughs> before we were the Panoply Academy Legionnaires, we were the Panoply Academy Corps of Engineers, and before we were that, we were, some of us were the Panoply Academy Glee Club, which we're representing tonight. compared to Per Ubu a lot, but I don't really know what they sound like enough to be able to say whether or not that's true. I've seen them play once, but it didn't move me in any way to think that, that they somehow influenced me. So I like to think that we no two songs written in exactly the same way and that we try and go for different feels. So there's not really one way to describe our band. I mean, besides eclectic. <laughs> Actually, watching the Jackson Pollock movie recently, and there's a scene oh, I know in it. The line you're gonna there's say a scene in it where Jackson. I don't know if this really happened in Jackson Pollock's life, but this woman asked him, you know, so when do you know when a painting is finished? And he said, you know, when you're making love with your with your wife. How do you know when you're done? And um, since since your songs generally don't follow like a, a only general, one of us has a wife. 
Well, whatever, you know what I mean. You know the point of the, what I'm trying to write a song, quote. how do we know when it's finished? Exactly. And I'm only asking that because your songs don't follow any sort of like normal, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, intro, you know, huh. bridge. We don't always pattern. agree when it's finished. <laughs> and sometimes, uh... Sometimes it's not the end, but sometimes we'll have the end and we'll rework we rework something to work in the middle. In the middle. Well, so historically, either Marty has brought in a little guitar part that we've worked around, or we've kind of all, in the beginning of practice, coming up with new things, and out of the ten minutes of fucking around, we found one bit that we thought was good enough to keep for another song, or to work off of for a song. I often sleep through practice, and, and then um, these, what these guys are doing kind of in, invades me in my dreamy state. And then they um, they kind of write some parts, and then I come up with my stuff while I'm asleep. And then when I wake up, I've got it all right there. I don't know what Darren told you, but it's probably not true. <laughs> but we don't ever necessarily, I don't think we ever truly consider a song finished that we wouldn't ever change it. Because we, we always will change stuff. Like we'll the compositions tweak. are really organic, like they keep changing. We'll tweak always. songs after they've been yeah. recorded even. Yeah, that's I've the noticed. problem with putting out albums. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be appropriate to the titles, I guess. They yeah. try to coincide in some way. Whoever feels the notion to call it a song will make a symbol, and then we'll all look at that person and uh, pass it around. So. There was one song where we did a little dance to the song. <laughs> we had Nick and I had some choreography, and that we scrapped that after one show. <laughs> it wasn't too well received. <laughs> The dance was pretty simple too, it was something like... We went... Yeah, exactly. That was how we counted it. Instead of counting one, two, three, four, we went... And then everybody busted in. It was brilliant, really. <laughs> that show was an ending. So nobody no, saw it. That was a show when I dropped one of my steel balls. That was the worst show I ever played. Aaron has steel balls. Well, I played alright, but I dropped it. Um, Oliver has about three or four of those parts. Just ask him for one. There's one of each color. I think Scott Clements has one. How did I do that? You gotta hit the pickup. I've noticed that when I go see a band, I generally have an expectation of what they're going to be like on stage, you know? Do you ever have expectations of like what you expect from an audience reaction or no? Do you just, it, when you're on stage, are you absolutely focused on what's going on on stage or do you ever actually <coughs> consciously take note of the audience and like what they're, oh, yeah. what they're doing? I look at the audience. I always have the audience in my corner of my left eye. I don't necessarily, I can't gauge you can see the audience, but you don't know if they're enjoying it or not. Because people might be dancing and people might not. But people sometimes might be throwing noisemakers at you and they might not. And you don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, there have been plenty of times when I thought that the audience seemed totally apathetic. I thought they hated us. And then afterwards, we get all this praise. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely nights when I know there's no connection. You know, there's nights when we play to a crowd that has never heard of us came to see a different band 
that's nothing like us and uh, has no palate for what we do, you know, has no... I don't know, that doesn't happen that often, but but it, it, it happens in Iowa City. So... <laughs> I'm pretty much ready to start. Uh, spread knowledge and correct knowledge, and I suppose it calls for realization and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Spread knowledge and correct knowledge, and I suppose it calls for realization and responsibility. Play the whole song? Sure. Bring the noise. Bingo, you start it. <laughs> <laughs> HD Soaching! this other band called the Isn't Syndicate and that didn't exactly work out. <laughs> and so some of those ideas continued into this, into the Panoply Academy Glee Club, which was the three of us and two other people named Ryan Hicks and Becca Walker. Yeah. I did some weak attempts with like tape sounds with this lousy tape player that you could hear the engine of the, or the motor of the tape machine louder than you could hear the sounds and I'd hold it up to the microphone and that was my first attempt at like sampling. I recorded some train and it was like <laughs> tape sound when you, you'd hear like a horn blow every once in a while. <laughs> Tour 97, and then a few months later we went on a summer tour. Broadcast tour was in. No, broadcast, broadcast tour, tour was, was the summer. summer tour. Yeah, spring break tour. <laughs> no way, we had. Maybe we should have prepared some answers before. <laughs> tour broadcast was tour was, was John Young in '96 before we recorded Rock. Oh yeah, that's right. And then the next year we toured. No, '97, '98 we recorded Raw, released Raw. We toured went on tour in broadcast. April. That wasn't broadcast. No. All I know is we had one tour where we were real broke. We had to drive from D.C. to um, Denton, Texas. We had 24 hours to get there and it was exactly like a 24 hour drive. We pulled up into the house about like an hour before we were supposed to play. It was a crazy good show. The kids were throwing bottles at us and stuff during the show. Because they was, were excited. Yeah, that was a good thing. <laughs> and, um, and so we had 10 days then of traveling through the desert. We had four shows with all these cancellations. We had no money. This is why we call it Broke Ass Tour. Four shows that didn't pay hardly anything. I had one Susan B. Anthony dollar to my name for ten days, and we we're just—it was just like we were endlessly driving through the desert. A lot of canceled shows, five flat tires, playing uh, busted hose, playing on the streets for money to make money to get to the next show. We actually made twelve bucks. I think. Staying in a house with a. A, a pot-bellied pig and some woman who fed her kid Fritos with sour cream. Like a three-year-old kid. It was fun. I have the most fond memories of that tour, probably, in a lot of ways. Can of beans every night.
I think it's, if there is, it's so vague that none of us can say it. <laughs> but, but although I think the, as far as that being our first song and that being called We, and that's all about the collective versus the individual yeah. to me. And I, I feel like I did that on purpose with those lyrics. And throughout all of our albums, I write a lot of songs using the we instead of I. Because every I feel like so much that I write about is personal and um, communal. Thank you. 